Hello and welcome back friends. This is Tiffany with Small Town 6 and today I am bringing you guys a what's for dinner video. This video is going to be up a few days early because it's in collaboration with my good friend Kim from Kim's Farmhouse Life. Kim is a mama of three kids. She shares a lot of similar content. She shares lots of grocery hauls. She shares what's for dinner videos. She shares um, get it all done and just a whole lot of stuff related to homemaking. So she's a really, really awesome person. I know you guys will love her channel if you haven't already watched her before. We have collabed in the past, it's been a while. So please go give Kim some love today um, after you get done watching my video. And thank you Kim for doing this collab with me. Um, you guys, today when you were watching this, it is my oh, 40th birthday. So um, today is my birthday when you're officially watching this. Um, just want to throw that out there. So today I'm bringing you some really awesome meals. These turned out better than expected. They were different. Some of these I've never even made before, but I'm definitely going to put them on the rotation in our house. So I hope you guys enjoy these recipes. I'm all about simple, easy, budget friendly recipes that taste good that my family will actually eat. So if you guys like that sort of stuff, if you, if you're new here, if you like grocery hauls and dinner videos and food content, and then I also throw in a little bit of clean in here and there, um, I'd love to have you guys here, but let's go ahead and get started on this video guys. I don't want to talk too long and don't forget when you get done watching my video to go check out camps. Let's go. So I am taking four, four ounce boneless skinless chicken breast. I've already cut mine up and I'm gonna put them in a bag. That way we can pour the blackened seasoning into this bag. Um, you need two tablespoons of blackened seasoning and then we are just going to shake this up in the bag and kind of get it mixed together really nicely. And once we do that, we are just gonna take this over to a skillet or pan on the stove top and we're gonna cook this um, over medium high heat and cook it um, until it's basically cooked through. And then we're gonna prepare the avocado cream sauce. And this is gonna be with a third a cup of Greek yogurt. You'll need a half of an avocado, a teaspoon of lemon juice, a half a teaspoon of garlic powder, and an eighth a teaspoon of salt. What we're gonna do is take a food processor and we're gonna put um, the yogurt, a third a cup of yogurt. Then we're gonna take the half a teaspoon of garlic powder, we're gonna put the teaspoon of lemon juice, and then we're gonna put the eighth of a teaspoon of salt in there, and we're just gonna pulse that until it's really nice and creamy. This will be the sauce that you pour over top of your chicken. And then it's optional to put some green onions. And then we're also gonna put in our avocado, or half of an avocado. So, that is what we're doing here. Now I'm going to make our Parmesan garlic quinoa. I just do this in the instant pot because it's so quick. It literally takes a minute. So I'm gonna take a cup of quinoa and a cup of water, um, or you could use this on the stove top if you want. There's a different way to do this, but it literally takes one minute of cook time. So here is that creamy avocado sauce. I'm just gonna transfer the cooked chicken into a serving bowl and it makes a ton. It is a little spicy, I'll say that. And then we're gonna go back over to our quinoa because it, it's been sitting for about four minutes. And then we are going to combine a teaspoon of garlic powder. We're gonna combine a tablespoon of olive oil, a fourth a teaspoon of salt, a fourth a teaspoon of black pepper, and a half a cup of Parmesan cheese. And just kind of mix this together and it's so good. You could also do this on the stove top and just follow the directions. Um, I think it takes about 12 to 15 minutes to cook the quinoa on the stove, but I prefer just to use my Instant Pot because it's so much quicker if you have one and it comes out perfect every time. I mean, it takes about 15 minutes to warm up, but so good. Okay guys, here is dinner. Here is the blackened chicken. It was supposed to be chicken breasts, but I decided to cube them because I prefer that it cooks faster that way. That way little ones can eat it easier. So, cooked that, chopped up all those chicken breasts in the packet. Very spicy seasoning, blackened chicken, or blackened seasoning is. 
Uh, this is a garlic parmesan quinoa. This is some black beans, like that on the other side. And this is the avocado um, dressing. So, this is different. I will honestly say Greek yogurt ha added some extra garlic powder in it because Greek yogurt has such a tart taste that you almost prefer sour cream in place of it. I mean, you can sub it out, but it has a strong taste to it that kind of overpowers it depending on like what you're mixing it with. But this turned out really well. It will go on top of this and serve it with some quinoa and always have a veggie. So I thought that paired well with it. There you go, guys. Super excited about tonight's dinner. This is a new recipe and it was so perfect. I am going to use one pound of ground turkey or ground chicken. You can use ground beef. Then we're gonna take two teaspoons of minced garlic into a bowl. We're gonna add in a, half, a fourth a teaspoon of salt. And then we are going to grate a teaspoon of ground ginger, unless you have it on hand. And then a half a teaspoon of black pepper. And you can add the half a cup of teriyaki sauce into this, but I'm actually gonna pour it over top of the patties while we're cooking them. I do keep ginger on hand because I bought it on sale at Aldi's and I put it in the freezer and it stays good for like ever. So I'm just actually grating it with a Dollar Tree uh, grater and it works perfectly for this. And then we are just going to combine that together into little tiny patties. And we're going to cook them on the stove top until they are cooked all the way through. And then we'll start preparing our other ingredients. So now we are gonna make the slaw. I'm gonna reserve the juice and drain the crushed pineapple. And um, you need to measure out three tablespoons of the juice and transfer it over to a smaller bowl. And then you can discard the rest of it. And I've actually gotta measure it because my can was huge. It wasn't the eight ounce can, it was like the 20 some ounce can. <laughs> so that's what I'm doing here. Then we're gonna add in the eighth of a teaspoon of salt. I'm gonna add the juice we're gonna add in three tablespoons of light mayonnaise. We're gonna add in one tablespoon of rice vinegar. I don't have that, I'm just using regular vinegar for this because I always keep that on hand. Then we're gonna add in um, a teaspoon of lime juice or grated lime zest, but I don't have that and I actually poured too much in here. And we're gonna add in um, all this together and mix it really nicely. Now in a separate bowl, I have got my half of a small red onion I'm blending together with my 10 ounces of shredded red cabbage. And I just processed that up in a thing. And then we're gonna add two teaspoons of sesame seeds. We're gonna add two tablespoons of fresh cilantro that I've already chopped up. I keep that on hand because it's like 69 cents at Aldi's. And then we're gonna mix that together and combine our creamy sauce we made with it. And this will make our slaw that we will top on top of our um, little mini Aloha sliders. Now we're gonna take the leftover crushed pineapple, and just heat it up, and we are going to put the little mini burgers on the little Hawaiian buns and top it with the slaw and then top it with the heated up pineapple. And it is so good. So here are the sliders with the um, coleslaw, with the homemade cabbage, uh, onion, cilantro-ish, um, spicy coleslaw, and the pineapple on it, and here are the waffle fries. I was gonna make the garlic aioli sauce with the asparagus fries, but we'll do that a different night. But here you go, guys. These look so good. Okay, this is super easy. I threw this together randomly. I chopped up some celery, an onion, I took some chicken breast, some garlic powder seasoning, some onion powder, 
and I'm throwing a bag of mixed vegetables into this and I'm going to put in two cans of cream of chicken soup. I'm going to dice up some potatoes and throw them in that I had on hand and then I'm just going to seal this. I'm going to put it in here for 25 minutes. And while that's cooking, I am going to make some biscuits in the oven just to throw on top of these. Um, and also, I did put liquid in there. You have to put at least a cup of liquid when you're doing that. So when it's done, I'm going to shred up the chicken breasts and I'm going to combine them back into the um, soupy mixture. And I added a little bit of heavy cream in. Okay, so here's the chicken pot pie. It is more kind of soupy texture, as you can see. But all of that, this isn't as creamy as some of the recipes I've made, but it looks and smells delicious. I just got some biscuits to put on top of there. Easy dinner all in one. This was a random recipe that I created on hand, spur of the moment. Um, I was gonna make cracked chicken, but I realized I was missing two major ingredients. So instead I'm just taking chicken breasts that I already had in the freezer. I'm taking about four large chicken breasts. I'm putting them in the bottom of my Instant Pot. And then I'm also going to combine that with um, two packages of cream cheese. And I'm just gonna cube that, just chop it up into little pieces so it melts easier. I'm going to combine uh, one packet of ranch seasoning mix. And then I'm also going to put a cup of uh, liquid in this because you have to have liquid in your Instant Pot to make it, you know, cook. So that is what I'm doing. And then we are just going to seal this Instant Pot and let it cook. I do recommend putting chicken broth because it does give it a little bit more flavor. And we're just gonna cook this in here for 25 minutes. And then once it's done, we'll take the chicken out and then I'm just going to shred the chicken all up real finely. And then I'm going to add in about a cup of the um, sauce. And then I go back and I add more because Ryan likes a lot of buffalo sauce. So this turned out really, really good and really, really creamy, especially considering this wasn't a recipe. This was just something I created. So they really liked it and used it for lunch the following day. And while that was done, I went ahead to serve as a random last minute side. Um, I had potatoes to use up on hand. So I went ahead and just took some potatoes out, washed them, and then I just cut them into little circles. And I put some olive oil, brushed some olive oil and some garlic salt on top of these and I just cooked them. It really depends on your oven for about 25 minutes at 425. But you have to watch them based on your oven. So easy, guys. And everybody loved this meal. And here was one more random dinner that I threw together. I didn't follow the instructions on the recipe. I just went ahead and I took... Uh, four cups of beef broth, but I didn't have beef, so I used vegetable broth. I'm just placing that in the bottom of this Instant Pot that I've sprayed out already. And I already had um, ground turkey, like taco meat that I cooked up. You can make your own seasoning. I just combined that pound of ground turkey that I'd already seasoned, because I make taco bowls all the time. I put that in the bottom of the Instant Pot with the liquid. And then I'm gonna take one jar of salsa and mix it into this. And then I'm going to take a box of pasta that I had on hand. So you can use um, just a pound of whatever pasta shells you want. And then I am just going to cook that for five minutes. So here is dinner. It was just randomly thrown together, this taco pasta, but it's really, really good. And it was so easy because I already had the taco meat prepared because I always make that um, every week to have on hand. So really, really good. I recommend making a pot. It literally only took five minutes to cook and then I just let it sit there and uh, naturally release for a while. Okay guys, that's gonna be all for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed it. I hope you'll give the video a big thumbs up. And if you haven't already, hit that notification bell. It just lets you know when I upload. And also guys, don't forget, if you're on Instagram, go follow me on there. We can communicate over there on Instagram. Same name, Small Town Six. So. I appreciate you guys watching um, and don't forget to check out Kim's channel and I will see you guys next time. I love you all. Bye.